Hi, I'm Al Schmidt. I'm a recording engineer and producer and mixer. Uh, right now I'm doing an, uh, an album with uh, Natalie Cole. It's uh, entitled Unforgettable 2. And uh, we did Unforgettable 1, the original one, and now uh, we're back again. Uh, my first experience with the uh, Picasso M7, uh, they brought one by for me to uh, check out and I just freaked over it and it it went on to other people and you know it's just stuck in the back of my mind that how much I liked it and how, how natural it sounded. I mean it's definitely one of the best echoes I'd ever heard. When I first heard about the Brocasti M7 I thought wow another har hardware reverb how are they going to sell that thing in the age of plugins? Uh, plugins are getting pretty good at reverbs with many different uh, programs and then I had the opportunity here at M7 and it was one of those aha moments of well of course I have to have one of these because plugins can't come close to this this doesn't sound like digital reverb this sounds like I just got a new space to record in a new room which is always my preference and there are very few rooms that don't need a little help uh, I've done one score in 20 years that had no artificial reverb and that was at Abbey Road Studio One. We don't always get to go there. <laughs> the M7 sounds like you're in just one of these great rooms. You don't hear the graininess, the artifacts, the tails are smooth and natural sounding. It integrates into the entire sound. You don't get a sense of Here's the microphone and here's this digital reverb back behind it. You're just changing the scope of your picture. It's as if you're adding more microphones, not a digital reverb. I ended up getting two of them because it truly is a revolutionary reverb. It stays patched in my system all the time. You know, the small spaces are the ones that I use, usually use quite a lot. I use them actually even on vocals to create that immediate, you know, effect without even being able to tell okay there's some ambience some kind of early reflection ambience in the sound but you don't quite distinguish it as reverb and you can still get like very immediate kind of sound like very in your face kind of sound there's a lot of great reverbs out there and um, you know this is a new one and it's very high end and so some people may be scared to like oh it's so another reverb, I could get my reverb from a plug-in or I already have two reverbs, three reverbs. Um, this does something I've never heard another reverb do. Uh, and it's not necessarily just about the tails, which are glorious and they trail off forever with no artifacts down to just before they die out so clean. It's really how it marries the source audio to what it's bringing to the party, the, the reverb itself and the, the hall and the room. I mean, I've used other reverbs in the past, which added a great tail, but they didn't marry the sound. Uh, as soon as I patched in the Bricasti, the feeling of a reverb unit disappeared and all of the sound just sat in the hall I was using. And it really blew me away. It took about five seconds for me to be completely sold on the M7. Hi, I'm Alan Meyerson. I'm here in Santa Monica, California at Remote Control Productions. Uh, I am a music scoring mixer. I'm about to start mixing um, Batman Dark Knight. The word I came up with was this largeness to it, a fullness in the sound. And I found that I was able to use a lot less reverb and really retain sort of the natural um, qualities of a good room. And, and then the other side of the coin was when I had stuff that wasn't recorded in a very good room. I was able to use a lot more reverb and not have it sound artificial. So it had these two qualities about it that are really, the, I find, the two hardest things to find in, in, a, in signal processing. One of the hardest things for me to get is a deep, long solo reverb. Everything sounds, you know, by the time you get into the fourth second of the reverb, you get all kinds of modulation. and. And you need that because without the modulation, it really doesn't sound natural because space has modulation to it. But you really start hearing the, uh, the reverb give up 
after a while. It just gets thinner and thinner. It dithers down or whatever the technical side of it is. And four seconds on this sounds like eight seconds on any other reverb. It really does. I mean, it just... So many reverbs, you have to set super long so that you can hear the first part, you know, the first third of the reverb before it kind of goes away into kind of digital nothingness. But this sounded like the deepest solo reverb I had ever heard in my life. And it was incredible. I mean, it just, I sent it to this client in France and he just emailed me back. He goes, how did you get that sound on the piano? And I mean, swear, this is all I did. I'm sort of found that this is the sound I want. I mean, it's really kind of the sound I've been looking for. I didn't even realize I was looking for it until I found it. And, and uh, so in a way, this is sort of the sound. I, I, I've been spoiled out of using lesser reverbs, not that they're not any good. And I do use them when I need to or for certain effects, but for the pure ambience or environment of, of a mix, I really think that this is the best that's been out there ever and and uh that's why although it's a big investment in a way i felt like i couldn't not do it 